Amidst Africa's serene waters and lush landscapes, an unexpected threat lurked beneath the surface. Hippos, often regarded as gentle giants, possessed a hidden ferocity that few dared to imagine. When they were pushed to the brink, these colossal creatures unleashed a devastating power, leaving a trail of astonishing encounters and tragic tales. Here are three intriguing stories that reveal the true nature of hippos. In the heart of South Africa's Free State Province, a tragic tale unfolded as a wild creature was born, defying even the most ardent attempts at domestication. Marius Els, a 41-year-old army major and seasoned farmer, was entangled in a dangerous dance with a force of nature he had dared to call family. The epicenter of this ill-fated bond was a 1.2-ton behemoth named Humphrey, a hippopotamus that Marius had nurtured since its infancy, imprinting a connection that ran deeper than mere ownership. To Marius, Humphrey meant more than a pet. He was a confident a companion, and at times he embodied the son Marius had never known. Yet as the sun lay below the horizon on that fateful Saturday night, a shattering of the veneer of domestication occurred, revealing the primal instincts that lurked within. In a harrowing onslaught, Humphrey's once affectionate disposition gave way to a brutal and relentless assault, leaving Marius Eld, a man who defied cautionary voices, as a tragic victim of truth as old as time itself. Wild hearts could never truly be tamed. The heart-rending chronicle of a man, a hippo, and the unyielding call of the wild ultimately bound them together in both love and loss. In the tranquil expanse of a 400-acre farm nestled in the heart of rural South Africa, the serenity that once reigned was shattered by a gruesome discovery. The lifeless form of Mr. Marius Els, a man whose affinity for the wild had turned him into a local legend, was submerged in the very river that had witnessed their shared moments of boundless freedom. The vibrant image captured earlier that year was a stark departure. Mr. Ells astride his colossal companion, a one 200-kilogram bull hippo christened Humphrey, jubilantly. The camaraderie they displayed was a sight to behold, a testament to the extraordinary connection they shared. To Marius, Humphrey transcended the boundaries of species, a sentiment he expressed with fervor that Humphrey was like a son to him. He was just like a human. Yet, as the sun set on this tragic chapter, it served as a stark reminder that nature's untamed spirit could never truly be harnessed. In those final haunting moments, the intricate tapestry of man and beast unraveled, and a story as complex and heartbreaking as the very essence of their extraordinary bond was left behind. This chronicles a love story, a connection that defied convention, and ultimately a price paid in the currency of wild, untamed hearts. He declared with unwavering conviction that they thought he could only have a relationship with dogs, cats, and domestic animals. But Maris had a relationship with the most dangerous animal in Africa. The words echoed through the air, proclaiming a message that turned heads and challenged perceptions. The extraordinary connection he shared with a creature that had earned a fearsome reputation was a testament. This connection transcended the ordinary and revealed their unique relationships captivating enigmatic depth. Mr. Els curated a menagerie of the extraordinary on the sprawling expanse of his farm near Klerksdorp in South Africa's northwest, showcasing his affinity for the wild. The giraffes craned their necks, the rhinos stood sentinel, and amidst them all, Humphrey stood, a once tiny hippo that had grown into a behemoth of astonishing proportions. At just five months old, he entered Els's world, forming a bond that culminated in creating a bespoke lake, a sanctuary where man and hippo shared their days. Yet amidst the idyllic tableau, a discordant note was heard. Louise, Elsa's wife and a pharmacist by profession, had reservations. Her apprehensions were rooted in a history marred by Humphrey's untamed instincts. In chilling echoes of the past, a grandfather and his young grandson sought refuge atop a tree, being chased by the very creature they now held dear. The farm witnessed more shadows. The beast claimed calves, and golfers fled from its pursuit. And yet Els remained resolute in his belief, asserting that his voice could beckon Humphrey home, deeming the massive creature lovable and a gentle giant. Tragically, that belief was met with its cruel reckoning as the river's current bore witness to a brutal farewell. In the aftermath, as the sun lay low, dispelling the day's warmth, it left behind an untouched man's body, dispelling the grim rumors circulating in the digital ether. This tale was etched in the paradoxes of love and danger, serving as a testament to the complexities that defined their connections with the untamed. It it served as a reminder that even the most cherished bonds could be tinged with shadows of the past. A remarkable image was captured in the crisp January air of 2011, depicting an extraordinary friendship defying all conventions. Marius L. stood there, his smile radiating pure joy, astride the colossal form of his steadfast companion Humphrey. Six years had woven their story as an unlikely bond transcended the barriers between man and beast. As Marius recounted, he said that if he decided to throw him away, he threw him like a horse. His friends didn't even go near him. 
Their connection was a testament to their singular nature, as they forged camaraderie in the crucible of trust and mutual respect. Visitors to his domain were greeted with a revelation, a man who dared to embrace the wild in a way few could fathom. The tale challenges our notions of friendship and leaves us questioning the boundaries of human-animal relationships. In the wake of the unthinkable tragedy that unfolded on that fateful day, the heartwarming tale of the man who had embraced a hippopotamus as his own took a haunting and chilling turn. Jeffrey Wicks, the spokesperson for the private ambulance services who rushed to the scene, revealed that doctors went to the scene and discovered that the man had been bitten several times by the animal. It was also found that the animal had been submerged in the river for an unknown period. The untamed, unpredictable nature that lurked beneath the surface of this unconventional bond was a stark reminder. What was once a story of improbable connection became a grim testament to the consequences of bridging the divide between humans and the wild. The British press, which had once been captivated by the tale, converged to grapple with the aftermath of a relationship that spiraled into a tragedy, shaking the very foundations of our understanding of the human-animal dynamic. The chilling epilogue to the story had begun with hope, but ended in a heart-wrenching lesson about the indomitable spirit of nature. In the heart of the African wilderness, amidst the vast expanse of Tanzania's untamed beauty, tragedy struck the Kirkin family, forever altering their grand safari adventure. Carol Sue Kirkin, a spirited 75-year-old matriarch from Rochester Hills, embarked on this expedition with her beloved kin, a journey that promised to etch cherished memories into the sands of time. Carol Sue Kirkin, a local luminary, was known for her entrepreneurial acumen, unwavering devotion to family, and ever-eager heart to serve. She was not just a grandmother, but the radiant nucleus around which her family orbited. Yet on that fateful August 5th, nature's formidable force shattered the serenity of the savanna with an unexpected and brutal encounter. Her life was claimed by a thunderous collision with a hippopotamus, an ancient and powerful guardian of the riverbanks. The collision left behind a void that echoed through the endless plains. The Kirkin family, bound by blood and grief, carried forward the legacy of a woman whose spirit soared as freely as the African skies under which she drew her last breath. In the wake of this tragedy, the wilderness stood as a sad witness, and the memory of Carol Sue Kirkin lived on, etched into the very fabric of the land she had come to love. Fate dealt a sudden, devastating hand to the Kirkin family. The African sun painted the horizon in hues of gold and crimson, and tragedy unfurled in the shadow of a mighty river. In the arms of her devoted son, Robert, Carol Sue Kirkin's indomitable spirit was extinguished as a charging hippopotamus forcefully ended her life. Time froze in that heart-wrenching moment as it etched an indelible scar on the fabric of their familial tapestry. The Kirkin clan expressed their grief by penning an obituary, their words filled with heaviness of loss but also shimmering with the memory of a woman who had woven joy into every life she had touched. They wrote in their voices a chorus of sorrow, expressing shock and sadness at her early departure from their lives. Without her, sadness always existed, but the joy she created was much stronger for her family and friends. In the hallowed halls of Crittenden Hospital, Carol Sue Kirkin donned her white coat and embarked on a journey of compassion and care as she tended to the delicate canvas of countless lives. She was a skilled skincare nurse, her touch was healing, and her knowledge served as a beacon of comfort. Yet Kirkin's ambition knew no bounds. She hungered to delve deeper into beauty and restoration. Guided by her zeal, she ventured forth and collaborated with a plastic surgeon, sculpting a path that would lead to a profound metamorphosis. In the dawn of 1991, a new chapter dawned as Kirkin's entrepreneurial spirit unfurled its wings with Arbonne International, a sanctuary of radiant skin and rejuvenation. Here, she ascended to the role of national vice president and became a trusted private consultant, leaving an indelible mark on the world of skincare. But Kirkin's heart didn't just beat for the pursuit of beauty. It resonated with an ardent desire to uplift those in the shadows of fortune. She was a founding pillar of the Rochester Area Women's Fund, and her passion blazed a trail of empowerment, illuminating the path for others to follow. As a stalwart board director of the North Oakland YMCA, she stood as a guardian of the community, weaving the threads of connection and support. Carol Sue Kirkin, a luminary of both the hospital ward and the boardroom, wove a tapestry of impact that stretched far beyond the confines of her professional endeavors. Her legacy, which was a testament to a life lived with purpose, continued to ripple through the lives she touched, leaving behind a trail of radiant souls. As the sun set over the tranquil town of Rochester Hills, it cast long shadows over the Kirkin family, a family that had been touched by both profound loss and a legacy that burned brighter than the stars. Carol Sue Kirkin's departure left a void, a palpable ache, yet her spirit lives on through the hearts of her three devoted children, Robert, David, and Chris. 
Alongside them stood five cherished souls, her grandchildren, who bore witness to the indelible mark she left on their lives. Among them, Eric Strickler, a beacon of gratitude and love, paid tribute to the digital realm. He wrote about the greatest grandmother anyone could ask for, his words composing a symphony of remembrance. With each keystroke, he wove a tapestry of shared moments, from experiencing the warmth of Christmases to feeling the thrill of skiing down Tahoe's majestic slopes. Italy's ancient wonders and graduations, celebrated with pride, were the chapters that bound them. As the cursor blinked on, Eric's sentiment echoed through the hearts of family and friends, resonating with the collective ache of a world that had been touched by Kirken's absence, yet was forever blessed by her enduring love. The Kirken family, united in their grief, grappled with unanswered questions, seeking solace in the memory of a woman whose light had shone brightly in their lives. As the days pressed on, the details surrounding Kirken's final farewell remained in flux, a testament to her abrupt departure. Chris Strickler, her daughter, took to the digital realm to convey the family's gratitude for the outpouring of support. She expressed the difficulty in finalizing arrangements for a service that bore the weight of unimaginable loss. The community, reeling from the news, gathered in shared remembrance in August that year from 2 to 4 p.m. at the Potere Modet's funeral home in Rochester. Amidst the sorrow, a chilling truth emerged from the annals of nature's hierarchy. National Geographic regarded the hippopotamus as Africa's most dangerous mammal, standing as a testament to the unpredictability that permeated the wild. Translated from the term river horse in Greek, these behemoths wielded teeth of such staggering proportions that their skulls carved out cavernous spaces to house them. The family grappled with losing their beloved matriarch, confronting the stark reality that nature's wonders could bear fangs of unimaginable consequence. In the midst of their grief, strength was drawn them from Kirkin's enduring legacy, an extraordinary life that found its final chapter amidst the untamed beauty of the African plain. In the heart of Osarian, Kenya, where nature's beauty coexisted with its dangers, the life of a 23-year-old fisherman named Enoch Romano was forever altered. Enoch's story was one of both survival and resilience, as he recently faced a terrifying ordeal that tested his very existence. While tending to his daily duties in the serene waters, Enoch was attacked by a hippopotamus, a creature known for its deceptively gentle appearance. The encounter left him with deep wounds which were so severe that his legs had to be amputated below the knees. The mighty beast's fateful confrontation had grim consequences. Enoch Romano's journey was a testament to the indomitable strength of the human spirit as he grappled with the physical and emotional scars of an encounter that served as a stark reminder of the untamed wilderness surrounding him in Kenya. His tale stirred a reminder of the fragility of life in the face of nature's mighty forces, and his determination to persevere inspired all. In the quiet corridors of Naivasha Sub-County Hospital, nurse Susan Kamau's voice echoed with a mixture of hope and determination. She stood resolute, bearing witness to the indomitable spirit of Enoch Romano, the young fisherman who faced the wrath of a relentless hippopotamus. His legs hung by a fragile thread as he found sanctuary in the theater, where he wrestled fate from the jaws of despair. The decision became stark yet unavoidable. They had to resort to amputation. As Susan recounted the harrowing tale, her words carried the weight of a solemn truth. Meanwhile, a second soul bore the marks of the savage encounter, as his thigh was etched with the scars of survival. Amidst the sterile walls, he clung to stability, showcasing the resilience that humankind possesses in the face of adversity. In the wake of that fateful weekend, the specter of human-wildlife conflicts loomed large, hauntingly reminding everyone of the delicate balance between civilization and the untamed forces of nature in that idyllic region. The incident that occurred to Enoch Romano and his fellow survivors stood as a testament to the courage that emerged from the crucible of such conflicts, a beacon of hope in the midst of a formidable challenge. As the sun dipped below the horizon, it cast its golden hues upon the tranquil waters of Lake Naivasha, while a sinister undercurrent coursed through the otherwise serene landscape. On that fateful day, Enoch Romano and his companion witnessed the unforgiving wrath of a hippopotamus, an encounter that forever altered the course of their lives. Tragedy, it seemed, was not confined to one soul alone. In the nearby enclave of Kasarani, another man was met with a grimmer fate as he succumbed to the brutal force of a hippo's assault. Lake Naivasha had become a battleground where survival hung by a fragile thread, transforming from a haven of harmonious coexistence 
The parched earth bore silent testimony to a harsh reality as drought had forced wild creatures beyond their familiar bounds in pursuit of life-sustaining water. Amidst the desperate quest, human encroachment unwittingly became a catalyst, pushing the majestic beings into unfamiliar territories. David Kilo, the stalwart chairman of the Lake Naivasha Boat Owners Association, lamented the dangerous dance between man and beast. Riparian lands, which were once shared spaces, were now fenced, unintentionally confining animals to the treacherous depths. They were forced to forge new paths and clash with unsuspecting humans in a tragic symphony of survival. The delicate equilibrium that once defined the region teetered on the precipice, serving as a stark reminder of the profound consequences brought about by their presence in the wild domains of nature. The haunting echo of Enoch Romano's voice carried across the shores of Lake Naivasha as each word was etched with the vivid memory of his near-fatal encounter. Tears glistened in his eyes, testifying to the profound gravity of his tale. On that fateful morning, the promise of a routine fishing expedition with four companions from the Kasarani area hung in the air. Waist deep in the water, he exerted his efforts to launch the boat, oblivious to the silent menace lurking beneath the surface. The hippopotamus concealed by the ripples bore down upon him. Enoch's face contorted with raw agony as he recounted the horrifying moment. He confessed that he had been a fisherman for nearly two years and had never been attacked by the animals. His voice was a mixture of disbelief and pain. The jaws of the beast clamped down, seizing both his legs in a merciless grip. A gut-wrenching scream pierced the air and someone miraculously answered the desperate plea for release. Enoch was released from the jaws of death and found himself in a state of bewildered shock. His mind struggled to comprehend the ferocity that lay beneath those calm waters. It was a tale of survival, as a man was thrust into the heart of nature's unrelenting power, forever marked by the day he glimpsed the true face of the wild. Enoch Romano's desperate plea pierced the air, his voice becoming a beacon of hope in the face of impending doom. He signaled to his comrades with swift urgency, silently crying for salvation amidst the chaos unfolding along Lake Naivasha's shore. Blood stained the earth as it served as a grim testament to the viciousness of the encounter. Enoch's world hung in the balance as he rushed to the Naivasha sub-county hospital. In the dimly lit male ward, nurse Susan Kamau stood as a pillar of strength, overseeing the arduous battle for his life. With measured reassurance, she relayed the news. Enoch responded to treatment, showcasing the resilience of the human spirit. Yet the toll was grave. Once a source of strength, his legs were now reduced to stumps. The weight of the bandages bore down on him, cruelly reminding him of the ordeal he had faced. Tears fell freely from their eyes, with each drop bearing witness to the profound impact of the tragedy. With a voice laced with both gratitude and sorrow, he extended an appeal to the hearts of well-wishers, pleading for a glimmer of hope in the face of adversity. He confessed that he was happy to have survived the ordeal, but had yet to come to terms with the tragedy that had befallen him. His words served as a poignant reminder of the long road ahead. Just a stone's throw from Enoch's hospital bed, John Gichinga, another survivor, bore his own scars from the relentless hippo's assault. His eyes glinted with gratitude, silently acknowledging the fragile line between life and death that he had crossed. In the midst of the growing tally of victims along Lake Naivasha's unforgiving spine, their shared stories chilled as a testament to the relentless dance between man and beast. They were reminded that danger lurked in the heart of nature's beauty, poised to strike at any moment. 